They say that good audio is more important than a nice looking image. And I think that's true, especially if like me, you have a beautiful, warm, soothing voice. You want people to be able to enjoy it to the fullest. So, you know, let me give you some tips on how to improve the sound in your home studio. So you can sound like me, warm and soothing and beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to make the audio in your home studio go from something like this. Lots of echo, doesn't sound very good, to this. Sounds a lot better, right? And it didn't cost me a thing. So let me show you what I did to improve the sound here. I'm in a three and a half by four meter room, no carpet on the floor, and there's a little window behind me in the corner. Now, the difficulty, I think, is finding the balance between a good looking room and a good sounding room. Because, you know, this is not a sound recording studio. Behind me, for example, that wall, it's not finished yet, but that's gonna be the background for most of my videos. And I don't wanna cover it all up with acoustic foam because I wanna put some shelves there and some nice stuff, you know, whatever. So it's never gonna sound like a sound recording studio. It doesn't have to. But before it sounded too much like an empty room, way too much echo, not nice at all. And you can make it sound a lot better for free. Now, that being said, the things that did cost me money also improved the sound, of course. I bought some of those relatively cheap acoustic foam panels and mounted them on the ceiling, makes a huge difference. And then on the wall in front of me, I mounted some more expensive acoustic panels. And all of that in combination with the big softbox here, it's a huge improvement, but still not enough. And even though acoustic foam and acoustic panels are not super expensive, if you have a medium to large space, it could add up quickly, you know? Also for me, because I need more. But right now, I don't feel like spending any more money on acoustic panels and acoustic foam. I wanna spend some money on interior design. So I needed to come up with another solution to improve the sound free solutions, free improvements. So here we go. First tip, open the door. What, open the door? Yeah, open the door. It's a huge, huge improvement. Especially in the early stages of my studio build when the room was empty, opening the door made a huge difference because then the sound can go somewhere and it doesn't stay in the room bouncing around. I don't know right now if it's still such a big difference because there's more stuff in the room now, but if there's not a lot of stuff in your room, opening the door will help, 100%. Another easy fix that I did is back there, the window. Windows are known to reflect sound like there's no tomorrow. And the window in my studio is in a corner, so that makes it even worse. Easy fix, put a blanket in front of it. It blocks out the light, but it also reduces echo in the room. This is a blanket that I already had. It's not a sound blanket, not at all. It's just a simple, I think, moving blanket. But it does the job just fine. Another temporary solution, a temporary fix that, you know, is similar to the blanket, towels. Just hang some towels on stuff that's not in the frame when you're recording. Right there is a shelf and the wall is pretty empty. So what did I do? I just put a towel on that shelf to break up and absorb the sound a little bit. And it works. Simple but effective and free. I mean, unless you don't have any towels and you have to go buy towels. Yeah. You have towels, right? And then the floor. The floor, the floor, the floor. Carpet is the way to go if you want a good sounding room. But I have wheels on my table. I have wheels. Oh, have you seen this? Look at my new, my new addition to the studio. Oh my God, it's all greasy. Fuck. <laughs> Look how it matches my belt. Doesn't this look super nice? Oh. Um, I'm gonna wash my hands. Mistake, but I still love it. Anyway, I have wheels on everything because I wanted a multifunctional studio, you know, I wanna move it around. So I wanna avoid carpets if possible because right now everything rolls so smoothly over the floor. Oh my God, I love it. And I want to keep it that way. So, no carpet. I had to come up with another solution. For now, because 
I think once I fill up the room with more stuff, I don't need this temporary solution. Joanna had some, or has some, big bean bags, and I put them on the floor there behind me. It breaks up the sound, it absorbs the sound, and now that big empty floor space is filled with something. <sighs> I forgot to breathe again. That happened before. <sighs> wow. You don't have to use bean bags. I think any big soft object will work. You just need to fill up the space, break up the space so the sound doesn't reflect too much. If you have a few dogs, put your dogs there. And then finally, whenever I record a video, I put a big box here with a blanket over it. You can't see it now, it's right outside the frame here. But together with the softbox here, it creates this V-shape towards the camera and the microphone. And I think it really helps. But I haven't made a comparison yet, so maybe we should do that now. This is with the box on the table. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Box on the table. I'm gonna take the box off now. Let's make sure I don't break stuff. Okay, and this is with the box off the table. Does it sound any different? I mean, I can't really hear it right now. I think it makes a tiny difference. You know, that's it. It's not like one thing will make a huge difference, but all these things together make a big difference. So don't think like, oh, I will do that and boom, my sound will be super nice. No, you have to do all these things and then it will be nice. My God, I'm way too excited today. And you know why I'm excited? Because tomorrow, I'm gonna get a helper here in the studio. You're gonna meet him next week. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and listening and see you in the next one.